Good afternoon. Thank you for that elaborate uh, introduction, uh, Mr. Roy, uh, respected chairman and my co-panelist, respected industrialists, uh, journalists, delegates. It's my opportunity to present uh, our view, and in fact, it is the view which PwC also endorses in terms of making organization safety first, uh, achieving towards no harm perspective. So I will be sharing some of our experiences with respect to some of the global companies whom we have worked in this field and some of the frameworks, tools, technologies which we have used so far. My Co-panelist, previous speaker, Mr. Jitendra, spoke about PSM in elaborate manner. Mr. Sinha spoke about safety culture and connecting to you in terms of cultural elements with respect to registers, processes, etc. So I will be talking more from the operating model perspective. So we have three themes for the session for the two-day session here, culture, competency, and the excellence. So stressing more on the competency and the excellence front, I'll be speaking more on the operating model and how companies worldwide, whether it's Shell, BP, Exxon, Mobil, trying to achieve or reorient their operating model in terms of clearly defining roles, responsibilities, accountabilities between their HSC or process safety functions and the line managers functions. This is the agenda I will try to cover uh, as much as possible in next 10 minutes. Some of this slide is known to everybody. So while we talk about operating models, so these are some of the areas or departments or people who we interact with when we talk about process safety or maturing the HHC function from a silo organization within the, or the silo business unit within the organization to uh, taking a larger role in terms of process safety. If I can ask you, how many have you ever heard that uh, digital technologies are used to improve process safety? So recently we had an interview with more than 1,200 uh, CIOs, CTOs, CXOs of the world to understand their perspective of technology infusion in terms of making operation excellence. And it came out that most of the technologies in terms of artificial intelligence, machine learning, or Industry 4.0 initiatives, so they are talking about improving process safety. A simplistic example, like I have a reactor and there are different fluids, whether it's a gas, liquid, vapor. So how can I predict with respect to AI or machine learning that after 24 hours, the operator in the night shift or the shift engineer sitting in the control room should be able to manage those operations safely without disturbing the parameters of pressure, temperature control, or there is some vapor going out, or there is some major accidents happening. So to predict that, people Companies are using a artificial intelligence industry 4.0 initiatives. So these are the thought process coming out from CTO or the CIOs of the world, invest in digital technologies to improve process safety. So to do this, there is a shift of their operating model is happening. So it's not only a silo function within a huge organization that I have 10, 15 safety engineers and whenever a safety audit comes and they will go to individual departments, prepare those individual departments in terms of processes, systems, tools, and make them aware for any uh, spontaneous interview or th by third party agencies. So to do that, so people are, or the organizations are, the CXOs are trying to see how this safety function as a whole take a larger shape in the organization if required, change their complete operating model of how they behave, define newer accountabilities within line managers and the safety advisors. All this is six elements are known in terms of people, process, technology, 
We spoke about risk assessment, hazard study, adherence to safety systems, asset integrity, incident analysis. I have a quick case study on incident analysis, how we can, how we have helped one of the global companies to identify a risk and thereby control elements and map those risk and control elements to make a robust implementation plan for the safety organization there. Management of change and the employee engagement. So this employee engagement is, seems very, uh, very soft part, but this is one of the critical part of the overall PSM elements. Yes, everybody is aware of what are the components of people, operational processes and technology leaps to a, a larger PSM uh, framework to be adopted within that organization. Commitment from management and leadership is the key here to take this forward. When we talk about commitment and uh, leadership, it is the driving force which these senior most people within the individual organizations strive to drive and become an uh, interlocutor between the line managers and the safety advisors. Most oil and gas comp companies have implemented process safety management system with a number of elements. This is where ExxonMobil, BHP Billiton, Wintershall or Oceaneering, so the diverse uh, area of companies whom we have worked with and saw how they have implemented PSM over the time frame in terms of planning, implementation, reporting and the feedback mechanism they have. So the common elements which we see is leadership commitment, risk assessment, training, competency, emergency, all these are elements which they have practiced, which they have invested upon in terms of resource, time, and, and, and monetary investments there. But still, we find this. But still, we find this. We have seen major incidents there whether it's BP or whether it's uh, in Bhopal, whether it's an example which Mr. Jitendra talked about in sugar industry in Georgia. So this is one of the example of where we have worked with an US oil and gas company. So they wanted to see how their process safety management system is faring well in terms of incidents which has occurred over the last 10 years. The incidents dump they shared with us. We did a quite uh, short QRA uh, uh, methodology to identify certain risk elements, certain control elements, and draw a robust plan for implementing or if there is an operating model shift that they wanted to do, we, we suggested them. It is that not only there we suggested that our implementation plan, we handhold them, we build internal capabilities, competency, and drove that company to certain excellence. So the time frame for this kind of exercise normally spans from six, year, six months to uh, kind of 12 months exercise. And if you see certain, if you see there the, on the left hand side, the QRA is, is Typically what we do is that we do a quite QRA and do certain risk identification and we have we know certain standard PSM elements are there, impose them and see our organizations are safety uh, compliant. But there is a larger element in terms of how do you control those? How do you identify control elements? How do you account? How do you assign people to those each of those control elements in terms of accountabilities? That's where the critical and the software and companies tend to spend less time on it. But that's the critical one. In, in our experience, that's where uh, the software uh, aspects remains. That's where the operating model is, is have their seeds showing upon. So you need to spend more time in terms of identifying people who will have control points, whether it's an automated or manual, what, whatever be the nature of controls are. Typical uh, risk elements we see normally is in terms of mechanical failure, inexperience and ignorance, poor decisions. So all these are the risk themes that we have identified over the number of occurrences for that particular uh, client. Typical control themes in terms of 
maintenance, inspection, operation, startups, shutdown procedures, staff training programs, etc. Process safety guidelines have been followed for them in terms of identifying uh, or mapping risk with respect to controls. This is where then we came to the conclusion that yes, we have, we have our own standards framework for uh, judging each company, the type of culture that they have used so far, starting from generative to proactive, calculative, reactive, and pathological. And we have uh, done this, we did a survey for all these companies, whether it's Shell, BP, ExxonMobil, BHP Billiton, and ExxonMobil, or DuPont, and we find this is an uh, interesting outcome of that particular exercise. The reactive ones are, if you see, most of the large sister six companies are there. So it's not that they have not invested, they have invested huge amount of money in terms of safety processes, but still they are having accidents, like we saw in some of the previous slides, Deep Horizon Act, et cetera. But how does company like ConocoPhillips is striving towards DuPont? So we speak to a lot of chemical and manufacturing companies in India and outside India. So people or the organization say that, yes, DuPont is my aim in terms of safety. How can I become DuPont in one day after five years, 10 years? So that's where they are in the most generative culture, safety culture framework that we use and we uh, obviously, DuPont, you know, there are a lot of safety uh, maturity frameworks which they have pioneered upon over the last few years. This is where companies are, tend to ignore, yes, I have done PSM, yes, I have done safety culture, I have mapped my process or organization with respect to uh, industry frameworks which are available in terms of safety maturity, but I, I, have, I have not invested on the operating model. How do you do that? It, it is that we normally think that there are five safety engineers, post them into line managers. It is not the phenomena that we normally practice. It's uh, do it for me. So I ask my safety engineer to come and yes, you draft my processes, systems for me and I am busy in my daily day to day work. Is, is that the operating model? Obviously not. So that's uh, companies are looking into changing the operating model in terms of giving more accountabilities to the people who are line managers. Safety people are just advisors and they would be called when and often when and required in, in some cases where they are required. So review the current operating model, what you have, design a new model or an ideal state and revisit those, those models in terms of your investment of competency, skills, people. Like you hire a mechanical engineer from IITs of the world, but after three years, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a master in, the, in that particular field. And when, he, uh, when he's being groomed into the organization to take leadership roles, so there is a lacuna in terms of the safety culture he has imbibed over the last, last let's say, 10 years or so. So imbibe that culture of safety from day one itself, whether it's he does processes, whether he does systems or any other discussions he has, any how he comes into shift and what should be his motive in terms of safety, how we see safety first. So define that operating model, imbibing that culture uh, is what uh, our organizations are facing. Uh, 30 seconds, sir. Uh, and then define the enablers. Is, this is where the fourth point is very critical. How do you define those enablers in terms of training, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of investment in tools, technologies, or in terms of digital technologies? So how do you imbibe your digital technologies in terms of processes, talk with or sit with those safety advisors, see here is a digital technology, here is my safety, and here is my operation people. So how can I predict my operations in near 24 hours or 48 hours so that my people have that uh, mindset in, in, in uh, have that mindset of safety as, as the first priority? 
So while designing or while conceptualizing a certain small improvement project, what is your safety that you are thinking of and what kind of tools and technologies you should be using? Obviously, there would be a lot of PSM techniques, culture, all those safety guidelines, PSA guidelines will be there. And uh, this is my last slide. Uh, this is how we see operating model definitions are changing in terms of safety organizations. The mandate is very critical and you see it's at, it sits on the top where you have commitment from the senior management. Then you have processes or PSM guidelines. Hazard uh, mechanisms are in place. Then the organizations and last it, it, it is standing on the uh, the pillar is standing on the, uh, on, the, on the rectangle of safety culture. So uh, safety is treated as one of the core uh, part of the business when we talk about uh, investing in newer technologies, processes, people. That's it from my side. Uh, these are some of the frameworks which we used uh, elsewhere and these are some of the proven uh, tools. The experience which we shown here is not to be quoted anywhere. Uh, in case of further details, please contact PwC or to, to uh, my email address, which is given below. Thank you very much.